Hey guys, Jason Scudelaire from Classic Truck Performance and behind me is my 69 F100 and today I'm going to do an upgrade install using CPP's all new spindle and hub and I brought Danny in from CPP to kind of tell us more about what we have on the table. So this is our Mustang 2 Corvette style spindle and hub kit that's in front of us now. Um, this happens to be 2 inch drop, there's also a stock a right height version of this thing um, and then the hubs come in, in three different bowl patterns we got your hubs in the, the, the six lug truck the truck five lug patterns five on five five on five and a half and then the car pattern that you see in front of us five on four and a half and five on four and three quarter so that takes care of all of your common bolt patterns that normally would be used on a mustang sure gear. so now we know they're going to fit pretty much every wheel out there let's get into more details about the bearing setup itself. So the bearings are really nice. So this is based on a C7 Corvette. This has really large ball bearings in, internally. It comes pre-assembled from the factory. It removes the tapered roller bearings traditionally on a Mustang II spindle that required packing the bearings with grease, required adjusting the bearing preload the right way. All of that's pre-done at the factory. The big advantage here is in the strength. Besides the fact that you can install this without getting your hands dirty, the bearings will remain preloaded even when you're cornering it over a G in something as big as your truck that's going to have no knockback on the calipers that you would normally have with that regular traditional axle pin and tapered roller bearings. The tapered roller bearings are so much smaller, so much weaker. This is really a big, huge upgrade. That's awesome. Um, getting into the spindle a little bit, you and I were talking earlier and there's something unique to the spindle. So this spindle really, it's Mustang 2 geometry and the brake setup is Corvette, except what we've done is we've machined the face for the hub mount an extra half an inch and then the caliper an extra half an inch. So then we can utilize these spacers that are in the front. When we install all the spacers, then the track width is just regular Mustang too. But we can remove one spacer at a time and we could pull the wheels in a quarter inch or a half inch on each side. Which is really big for you know some people out there who may be suffering from tire clearance to fender. Being able to bring that in, like you said, that, that quarter to half inch, that's pretty big. So why use the Corvette platform? The Corvette style platform just opens the door to a lot of other brake options that are out there. Whether you're buying brake upgrades from Classic Performance Products or you're buying them from any other brand, there's so many that are designed to fit a Corvette spindle and hub and this really interchanges with all of those other options out there. Yeah, and that's kind of why we went with this uh, kit because I already have Willwood brakes on there with the 14 inch rotor um, and this is going to work perfect with that. Okay, I have to ask, last question, what's the price? So the kit like you see it out here with the hubs, that's 329 hubs and spindles. Um, and we can pull out the hubs if you just want to do spindles and, and all the spacers and the hardware, that's 269. Awesome, so quality parts at a great price. All that's left for me to do is get the parts off the table and onto the truck. So with the wheel removed, we're going to take the caliper off next. Will would have sent us out a new hat to change the offset of the rotor for the Corvette style parts we're putting on there. Also another caliper bracket. So let's get started. And I'm just going to hang this out of the way because there's no reason to take the caliper off because the system's all bled out now and there's no reason to cause more work. All right, with everything disassembled, we're almost ready to get things back on the F100, but first I wanted to go through a couple things. Here I got a stock reproduction Mustang II spindle. Here's the new Corvette style. Um, they took a few steps to lighten it up, yet they kept the webbing in there for strength, and that carries through both sides. And the other thing that really stands out is the size of the bearing. Here's the one I pulled out of the old hub. Here's the new hub, much larger, much stronger. So that being said, we're gonna move on to the next step and get some parts thrown on this thing. All right, the first step we're gonna to have to do is take the rotor off the old hat. I'm gonna show you the comparison here. This hat's gonna get us back in the stock location of the rotor for a Corvette. So we'll not use that one. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rotor on here. We're gonna get this all bolt it down, torqued up, and uh, safety wire it. Go ahead and torque these down to spec.
With the new hat on the rotor, everything torqued down, now we are starting the procedure of safety wiring everything. For anyone that thinks that this is an easy job, it's kind of like TIG welding. If you don't keep up with it and practice, it's not that easy. And you don't want to over tighten it because then you break it. And then you start over. So what I'm doing is three at a time. And I was told if I was flying an airplane, FAA would say that is the limit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the half inch studs into the hub. We're gonna Loctite them just towards the end of the threads. That's all you need, because obviously that's the only place it's gonna be engaging on the hub. All right, with the Loctite in, we're gonna torque them down. I'm just using this rotor here as a fixture. Hold it in place as I torque them. All right. All right, so now it's time to start assembling the parts, starting with the spindle. Don't forget your boot on top. Go ahead, tighten this up so I can get a cotter pin through there. So I'm gonna keep the stock track width. So we're gonna add the spacer here, put it over the seal, and then onto the car. All right, so we're gonna go through with the two spacers at CPP Supplies, and then the new caliper bracket that Willwood supplied. And again, this is all to keep the stock track width. So if we wanted to go in at the half inch or quarter inch, we would just either put both spacers on the other side or split them. And that's just to keep the bolt length proper. Here's the other spacer that CPP supplies. The good thing about it, it actually goes underneath the rotor. And I'm just gonna put a lug nut on there to keep things from moving around so I can put the caliper on and see where we're at. All right, so with the new bracket, we got new hardware, nuts, washers, and some shims so you can fine tune everything. I'm gonna start with no shims and see where we're at, and I'll add if I need to. That looks good. That feels nice. Um, and the engagement of the pad to the rotor is pretty much spot on, so I don't think we're gonna add any uh, shims. We're just gonna go ahead and put the washers, nuts on. All right, go ahead and tighten all that stuff up. Go ahead and install the tie rod. And tighten that up, put a cotter pin in there. That's bad to the bone right there. So with a couple hours, some basic hand tools, I was able to equip my truck with Corvette style spindles and hubs while keeping my wheel wood brakes. All that's left now is for me to get back in the seat.